How's it going, guys? It is 3.47 a.m., 2nd of March, Thursday, here in Japan. We have a medium difficulty question for vascular step one. Nearly identical question shows up one of the new NBME forms. Before we get started, please subscribe to my channel. Really appreciate it. Give it a like. Really appreciate it. Find me on Instagram, melman underscore medical, M-A-H-L, man underscore medical. Links down below. Find me on Telegram. Links to Telegram group and channel down below. Now start the clip. 61-year-old man, 40 history of leg swelling and shortness of breath. He has a subclavian arteriovenous fistula caused by a stab wound 10 years ago. Question wants to know which of the following is most likely to be seen as patient. So before even hopping through these answer choices, we have a past level vignette. I said medium difficulty question overall because these answer choices are a bit tricky. But this past level vignette is that you need to know it's exceedingly high yield that AV fistulae slash conduits cause high output cardiac failure. You're going to have blood going from high pressure to low pressure, arterial to venous, increasing preload venous return on the right heart, and that can lead to decompensation of the heart, okay? It's a very important cause of high output cardiac failure. That's, that's what should be screaming at you. They can be due to trauma, as in this case. They can be iatrogenic. They can be uh, EG due to Paget disease of bone, okay? So let's just whip through the answers here. What are we most likely to see? Should I say decreased left ventricular diastolic compliance? Wrong fucking answer. This reflects diastolic dysfunction clearly. Uh, what I can tell you is the highest yield cause for USMLE is going to be cardiac amyloidosis, which is protein deposition due to multiple myeloma. Okay, sounds highly nitpicky and specific. Not my opinion, it's on the NBME exams, all right? Also, history of uh, radiation of the chest can cause fibrosis. You can have hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, which is just systemic hypertension causing a stiffened left ventricle, uh, aortic stenosis, afterload causing a stiffened left ventricle, hypertrophic obstructive cardiomyopathy, beta myosin heavy chain G mutation, autosomal dominant. Wrong fucking answer. Choice B, decreased pulmonary vascular resistance. Wrong answer. So we have increased preload, as I said. That means increased blood volume in the right heart, which means more volume going to the lungs. So the pulmonary vasculature will constrict in an attempt to prevent excessive blood flow, okay? So we get pulmonary hypertension. This is similar to, let's say, if we had a VSD or an ASD, where we have increased blood going from left heart to right heart, and then the pulmonary circulation has to handle, has to accommodate that increased uh, preload, and you'll get pulmonary hypertension, increased pulmonary uh, vascularity. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, decreased stroke volume, wrong answer. So clearly this one's more straightforward, high output cardiac failure, we'd have increased stroke volume. It's fucking wrong. Choice D, increased arterial resistance, wrong answer. This one's a little bit more challenging. You say, well, if we had high output cardiac failure, if the heart's failing, couldn't we have, in theory, decreased blood pressure, then that would lead to a compensation where we'd have a constriction of the systemic vasculature to compensate. Yeah, I can understand that. However, this would more apply to cardiogenic shock where we have an MI, okay? Also hypovolemic shock. Uh, those are gonna be two important causes of increased arterial resistance. So it's not the best answer in this case, okay? We might raise an eyebrow to it, but it's not the best answer. Wrong fucking answer. Choice C, increased crowded baroreceptor firing rate. Correct answer, so high output cardiac failure. So uh, increased cardiac output just means increased stretch of the carotid sinus baroreceptors. So cranial nerve 9, glossopharyngeal nerve, increased firing to the solitary nucleus of the mandala. Then you're going to increase vagus nerve, cranial nerve 10, efferent firing coming down to the nodal tissue, slowing heart rate, parasympathetic, okay? So what you need to know, I mean, there's a lot of, there's many tangential points we can go on, but... You need to know that carotid sinus baroreceptor firing rate is directly proportional to stretch. So for example, if we had decreased cardiac output with decreased blood pressure, we would have a decreased firing rate, not an increased firing rate. Students erroneously sometimes think that the carotid sinus baroreceptors quote unquote wake up in response to any change in pressure. Okay, they don't. So if you had decreased cardiac output, let's say a patient goes from supine to standing, then we would have a down arrow for carotid sinus baroreceptor firing rate. In this case, we have high output from the heart, so we're gonna have an up arrow for carotid sinus baroreceptor firing rate. You know the deal, I'm gonna continue to make more content. If you like my stuff, subscribe to my channel. And I appreciate your time, that's it.